So we're going to be mapping this thing out now, yeah. right? Yes. Um, so I, this is maybe just how my brain works, but I like to kind of get an idea of what the first step is going to be and then go to the last step uh, and kind of fill in the middle, you know, kind of backwards design. So maybe we can start with what we think our, our first thing we're going to do with the students is. Okay. And so, like that plan. yeah, so reminding ourselves from last time, we've got our driving questions, the problems associated with urbanization, solutions to those problems, and then making Shakti a smart city. And eventually they're going to get to that summative where they're presenting that information in some way yep. of their choosing. Okay. So how do we get students interested in urbanization and problems in Shakopee? Do they just think about problems? Do we just brainstorm, talk about it? They probably have some perspectives. I think we need them to maybe connect with an expert or something. Right away. Or near the beginning, doesn't need to be a first step. But. What if just to get kids thinking to start with, they think about a slew of problems, just brainstorm a slew of problems associated with Shakopee before we even talk about urbanization and then maybe we can kind of tease the, ur the problems associated with urbanization from our big list. And then I agree with Eric, I think it is um, important, especially for keeping it local like we decided, to have a local expert come in and start to talk to the kids about maybe the changes that Shakopee's undergone or some of those issues that we see in our city. I like that. Who could that be? Mayor. Be a little bit big, I guess. But we said historian over here. It could be somebody from Scott County. Oh, yeah. Scott County okay. Historical Society. Um, I think, too, like our library downtown um, has a wealth of knowledge about Shakopee and how it's changed. Right. Maybe yeah. a librarian or, or somebody down there would be willing to come and talk to us. About changes in Chaco. Okay, cool. I like that. All right. So. Talk about some problems, connect those to urbanization there to start with. Um, have an expert talk about changes over the years. And then I think we need to dive into content a little bit here to make sure they have an understanding of those different like types that vocabulary. of vocabulary. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so I don't know, how would we phrase that? Um, look at vocab or I guess like types of issues or category um, categories like because we talked about those different factors on our standards mm -hmm. so transportation pollution so we want them to look into those here yeah right and maybe instead of <coughs> excuse me everybody looking into everything maybe this is where we can kind of have the kids divide and conquer a little bit. Mm -hmm. like, a, like a jigsaw or something? Sure, yeah. Now we said in our quadrants that we don't need the kids to address all the problems. Yep. So they're just gonna pick one. One. Yes. So now is that where that happens? Yeah, I feel like after they've learned a little bit more about all of them, they can make an educated decision as to which one they wanna dig a little bit more into. Okay. Yeah. So they choose a problem to focus on. Mm -hmm. And then this is where we need to explore how to fix those problems. Yes. So is this a space where we bring in other experts? Like if we had a historian come in here or a librarian, is this where we bring in people from those different categories like Department of Transportation or City Council or something? De Oh, maybe we could create like little like focus groups based around problems. So it's an expert with a few kids that have chosen that as their problem to brainstorm possible solutions. Mm -hmm. What's out there, what the future holds kind of a thing. Yeah. Well, and you know, even just if some of those, those experts can talk about that from a local lens, but then there might be a space somewhere in here for students to look at cities elsewhere that are trying certain things. Mm -hmm. So a little bit of research yeah. as well. So this is kind of part of that gathering information from those experts, but they could also research other places. 
Yeah. Um, would that go here then, I think? Maybe. Let's try it. Like, how else have people solved these problems? Research innovations? Yeah. So it could be a spot, too, where that might be outside of just shock me, too. Because maybe, like, Minnetonka has got some ideas about pollution. So taking some of those ideas mm -hmm. would be a good idea. Yeah, and how they could apply to us, or how we could apply it here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Um, so then, OK, so they've heard from experts. They've had um, a chance to do some research. Then is this the space where they figure out what are some possible solutions, start to figure out? Because we want them eventually to choose the best one. But I think here they still need to be figuring that out and getting some possible feedback so on it. So the way you just worded it, I'm wondering if we shouldn't have kids kind of com compare and contrast the solutions. Yeah. Because we don't want them to just pick one without really diving into what's best, right? Right. All right, so once they compare and contrast different solutions to the problem, then what? That's going to help them pick the best one mm -hmm. for their problem. OK. So I feel like this would be a good spot to kind of slow down and check what they think the best solution is with somebody else. So okay. who are they going to get feedback from on that? Well, it would be great if we can get our experts back in to talk to them or video conferencing or something like that. But obviously, with their schedules, if it doesn't work out, it could just be peer or parents, their community members. So maybe parents could give some feedback. Yeah. The old perspective would be great. Yeah. So I put that here when they're comparing and contrasting. Uh -huh. Does it make sense there, or should it be after they've chosen something? Maybe after. Like once they, because the next step is for them to pick, right, what they think yep. the best solution is. Yep. And why. Okay. Maybe they get feedback both places. I'm just wondering if that's if we really meant for that to be here. Should I scoot it over? I don't think, I think it, it goes both ways. Matter. Okay, okay. We can build it in. Okay. <coughs> best solution and why, and then this is where they're gonna refine, right, and revise based on feedback. feedback. Yeah. So um, feedback from, and then here's where, like you said, parents, right, one. Yeah, parents, parents, peers, experts if they're available. Yep. Uh, and us, even. Teachers, right? Yeah. Okay. Got it. So, could we say now that they've gotten feedback and they maybe they had to go back and, and do a little research, but could we say that we're at the point where they're ready to kind of present? their idea or are we not there yet I wonder if I do think so but before that let's make sure we add in a little time here for them to revise plan. based on that feedback and then plan and rehearse their presentation but then yes that's where we're headed I think um, with the plan piece too can we get some um, get some work in there about what, what a quality presentation is and yeah I would talk about so. those things. So revise and refine. Solution, right? Yes. <clears throat> oh, you know what else? We said they were going to get to choose how they present. So, so that's coming in now. Yeah. Um, so they need time to figure out how they want to present their information. Mm -hmm. Do you think we might have to suggest some options, or do you feel I... like the kids will be able to brainstorm those on their own? I don't think it would hurt for us to have some suggested, like to choose from. Your purpose? Purpose, yeah. And what they like, right? Mm -hmm. So, what would be some of those possibilities? We talked about they could do before, like a digital tool, video, um, 
slideshow. Video, slides. They could pretend to be like a journalist and do like a newspaper article mm -hmm. or. Yeah, that's a place to start. Okay, so once they've chosen that, then they've got to practice, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe build in some time for those public speaking skills. Yeah, so that yeah. The <coughs> students do, do a good job presenting. That's another opportunity for an expert. Maybe that's a even though even the principal could talk about that those things. They do presentations all the time. So we want a feedback loop here, right? Yeah. So if they're getting feedback, they're going to re hopefully revise mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. Their actual presentation. And then they're doing this, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that at that point they'd be ready. And then we want to think about when they're done. How they reflect? Yes. So what might that look like? Well, I think they need to reflect as a group on how they did, how they worked together, how they solved problems together. So group, uh, I don't know. How they all kind of contributed to the yeah. work and collaborated together, the roles. And then also just kind of like, would this work, right? Why do you think this would work? Why did you pick this, right? Is it a viable solution? Yeah. Yep. What would you change? Mm -hmm. And what did you learn? Right? Yeah. Okay. Got a good start, you guys. Yeah, I think that's good for this meeting. Yeah, I think so too. Sounds good. Awesome. Good work. Nice. Good job, team. Woo! Woo! -hoo. Woo! <laughs>